five. You know what I have here? We don't care. Yeah, you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. In this paper is an article, and in the article is an answer to our problem. What problem? What problem? We have nothing to do. Am I right? You're darn right I'm right. Well, I'm here to change all that. You want to know how? No. Well, I'll tell you. According to the Stars and Stripes, the Eddie Cantor radio show is auditioning people for the most talented act in the armed forces. So? So, the Pacific Finals are in Honolulu. Honolulu? That's right. And the winner goes to Hollywood. Hollywood? Hollywood, that's right. And who's to say that the winner can't be somebody from the Sea Tigers? Many people say I am wonderful singer Greek songs. Yes? I was in my high school Greek club. I got raves for my buttercup. That's great. <laughs> well, I had two years of tap and three years of artistic movement. In Miss Archer's class in Baltimore, yeah? I was honorable mention in artistic movement. That's terrific. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is we need something to occupy the men. You know what they say, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Ah, I see. And you seem to think that the sea tiger is a show business mother load. Well, I'm... Have you ever heard Seaman Dixon play Lady of Spain on his harmonica? No. It killed Gutterman's hamster. <laughs> Sir, as the executive officer of this sub, morale is my responsibility. I was only trying to do my job. But if you feel so unenthusiastic about it, let's just forget about the whole... Hey, hey! Don't get so touchy. I'm just thinking that it might be good for the crew. You can hold your additions in the offices club. Thank you. I don't believe it, Dobrich. You don't do anything? Yeah, I fixed these engines. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Stanley Dobrich and his trained diesels. <laughs> All right, Horner, how about you? Oh. You have any talents? Now you're talking. Horner, do your Jimmy Cagney. You rat. You dirty rat. <laughs> you're the guy that shot my brother. <laughs> That's not bad. I've heard worse. Worse? Worse? Where have you heard worse? <laughs> there are natives right here on Kaloa. That never heard of Jimmy Cagney that do a better Jimmy Cagney. <laughs> All right, fine. That's good. Norbridge, no talent. Horner, no talent. Hey, I didn't really need you guys anyway. I got Dixon, Doplos, I got Manginini. Manginini? You got Manganini? I got Manganini. What's he gonna do? Haven't you heard him sing? Manganini can't even talk. <laughs> That's what they said about Caruso. He... What? Enrico Caruso never sang a note until he was 22 years old, and the rest is history. That doesn't sound true. <laughs> then don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Mm -hmm. You got Manginini? You got me. <laughs> me? Sing? You crazy? Listen, Manginini, if Dobrich can do a comedy routine, you can sing. Dobrich is gonna do a comedy routine. Call me in. <laughs> what should I sing? What do you know? Pennies from heaven. <laughs> sing that. I'll do a poetry reading. Poetry reading? <laughs> My first bird is the evening grosbeak. It's a big yellow, black and white bird with a strong bill for crushing seeds. My 
second bird is the slate-colored junco. It's gray and furry with a white tummy. <laughs> Now this this is not a bird. This uh, this is Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> All right, Louis, drop the gun. <laughs> Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? You'll find your fortune falling all over town. It sounds like you're gargling. <laughs> Sir, these are the worst couple of hours of my life. And keep in mind, I've had root canal work. College girls, didn't you? We have a no talent sub, and I'm not going to embarrass the Sea Tiger by sending any of those losers to Honolulu. Begging your pardon, sir. Seaman Broom and I have something that we'd like Alvin. to. We have something that we'd like to show I'm you, not sir. Do it. Look, come on. You know we can do better than what we just saw. Sir, he's just shy. Well, what is it? An act. Is it long? <laughs> And he's sort of gruesome. Nonetheless, we will both give it a shot. Cause my name is Honko, and my name is not. Hey, Broom? Yeah. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? That was no lady, that was your wife. <laughs> Here, Honko and Broom, a talented two sum. Hey, Honko. Mm -hmm. Did you drink your medicine after your bath last night? After I finished drinking my bath, I didn't have room for my medicine. <laughs> You've got snoo all over your shirt. What's new? Nothing. What's new with you? Oh. <laughs> you may think we're struggling, but you ain't seen nothing till you've seen our juggling. I 
got some good news and I got some bad news. What's the bad news? The bad news is they cut our pay in half. What's the good news? The good news is if you're half, they cut it. <laughs> Imitation. Horses. Hooves. <laughs> Imitation. A man doing absolutely nothing. That's right. We bring you two balls in one hand, one ball in the other, two balls in one hand, one ball in the other, for a total of six balls back to back with Indian leg lock. And they said it couldn't be done. One, two, three. And they were right. My name is Hunkle. And my name is Nod. No. and Uncle and Broom to Honolulu for show business, we had some supplies to deliver to Beku for war business. Zero, zero, five degrees. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, Uncle Broom, you want to step over here for a minute? Dixon, take over. Man, first I want to say I think you're both very talented. And in my opinion, you have an excellent chance of winning. Oh, thank you, sir. However, there's nothing in life that can't be improved upon. You know, interestingly enough, when I was at Annapolis, I was considered a pretty fair writer of lyrics. We did this one musical, Annapolis for the Teacher. You get it? Annapolis is for the teacher. <laughs> well, anyway, there was this song that I wrote. Potatoes are for the gravy, battleships for the navy. A pulpit is for the preacher, an apple is for the teacher. <laughs> Last night, I uh, kind of threw this together just for you boys. It's uh, to the tune of Getting Lucky. Do you know how it goes? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, let's try. Oh, yeoman hunkle. Yes, seaman broom. Can you tell me where tonight I'll find a room? Well, I really had an order, cause the room is with my daughter. And she's single yeoman hunkle. Single wingle seaman broom. <laughs> you put a little funny dance to that. You can't lose. Go ahead, go ahead. Hold this back. Single wingle. Single wingle. <laughs> and she's single yeoman hunkle. Single wingle seaman broom. Single wingle? Where did that come from? Well, uh, the captain, sir, he wrote it. Uh, he said it would go good with a funny dance. Well, the captain should stick to his periscope. <laughs> so just forget it. Let's go back to what we had. All right. Stay from the top. We're Hunkle and Broom, a talented twosome. He's shy, but he's cute. And he's kind of gruesome. Excuse me, could I just say something? <laughs> sure. I couldn't help but notice that you were projecting incorrectly. Hmm? What? I remember at the University of Providence. When I played Ophelia, the first thing that Dr. Wellbacker told me was to speak in full, well-rounded tones and to project as if you're talking to the last person in the last row of the balcony. So it's up, it's out, and it's clear. So it's take a deep breath, support, and project. A E I O. All right. 
All together. This is a radio show we're doing. If they did that on the microphone, it would blow out every eardrum in the country. Don't you know that? Of course I know that. We're just discussing the principles of projection. Naturally. This is radio, so of course they don't have to do it. Okay, let's take it from the top again. Lieutenant Kern tells me you're requesting Yeoman Hunkel and Seaman Broom, two combat seamen, to fly to Honolulu and appear in a talent contest? Yes, sir. It's perfectly legitimate. It's right here in the Stars and Stripes. I don't read newspapers, Alan. <laughs> Freedom of the press was a big mistake. <laughs> but, sir, the winner gets to go to the Eddie Cannon radio show in Hollywood. Who? Eddie Cannon. The comedian. The singer. You know, if you knew Susie, like I know Susie, oh. This man just sang and danced if you knew Susie in my office. Does that tell you anything about him? <laughs> the man is simple. But Admiral Bork... Maybe I'm missing something, Heller. But what do talent contests have to do with winning wars? Well, nothing directly, sir, but they're very good for morale. For morale, we've got ping pong. And wasn't the Sea Tiger issued playing cards? <laughs> I don't like the smell of this, Heller. Show business is for sissies and not for the men of Com Sub Pack. Request denied. Sir, I enjoy show business, and I am not a sissy. Very well, you're not a sissy. What else? By denying this request, you are undermining my authority as captain of the Sea Tiger. And you're being insubordinate, Haller. No, sir, just honest. My men have been through a lot, and it was my judgment that this talent test would be good for their morale. Give them something to root for. You disagree. But if that is your position, I feel my effectiveness as their commanding officer would be severely limited. I therefore request immediate transfer off the Sea Tiger. Request denied. Well, you don't have to make a federal case out of it, Haller. Very well. If it's so important to you, you may proceed under one condition. What's that? I pick the talent. Oh, well, you see, sir, we've already picked the best acts. I'll be the judge of that, Susie. <laughs> Creeper, which has white undersides and a stiff tail. And a guy puts down his beer and he says, uh, what the are you looking at? Haven't you ever seen a before? <laughs> I'm the good pink submarine. We're the cutest kids to be seen. But my name is Hunkle. And my name is No. That's a winner. Now, that act has humor, it has patriotism, and it is unique. I would like to see it again. Hit it, Sid. Oh, mother! That's good. That's awfully good. The drum comes coming everywhere. Can I buy you a drink? Only if you let me buy you one. Of course, I'll uh, have to return the compliment. No, I'll have to reciprocate. If we play our cards right, we may not come to until this whole thing is over. <laughs> How'd you make out? Well, I'd go on the stage in Honolulu with my lettuce, 
and my tomatoes and my cucumbers and radishes, I'm all set to go. The band plays and I choke. Over there, over there, leave the word to the boys over there. Then all of a sudden, they stop me. Well, what do they say? They say, hey, get that garbage off the stage. 